One, two, three, four, five. Good evening, buenas noches. Y en este momento yo voy a invitar toda la gente en la iglesia que pueden uh, caminar a salir de la iglesia en frente por el fuego nuevo. At this time I'd like to invite everyone who is able to, uh, to come and exit the church, to come to the front of the church for the blessing of the new fire and we will begin our celebration outside around the new fire. Vamos a empezar nuestra celebración afuera, alrededor del fuego nuevo. Del, del fuego. Y cúmenos pueden ir al fuego.
Sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to His Word and celebrating His mysteries, then we have the sure hope of sharing His triumph over death and living with Him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify the fire, we pray, and grant that desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to Him, and all ages to Him be glory and power through every age forever and ever. Amen. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. You guys follow behind me. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
the light of Christ. The light of Christ.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let the angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound the loud almighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. Ablaze with the light from her eternal King, let all corners of the earth be glad, gnawing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which he slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, were thee alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld 
This is the night of which it is written, The night shall be as bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, And full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. Of fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets Christ, your Son, who, coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these the last days has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete the paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Pueden apagar sus luces. At this time you may extinguish your lights. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, 
Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the giant sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food, and to the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in all the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lectura del Libro del Éxodo El Señor dijo a Moisés, ordena a los israelitas que re reanuden la marcha y tú con el bastón en alto. Extiende tu mano sobre el mar y divídelo en dos para que puedan cruzar, cruzarlo a pie. Yo voy a endurecer el corazón de los egipcios y ellos entrarán en el mar detrás de los israelitas. Así me cubriré de gloria a expensas del faraón y de su ejército, de sus carros y de sus guerreros. Los egipcios sabrán que yo soy el Señor cuando yo me cubra de gloria a expensas del faraón, de sus carros y de sus guerreros. El ángel de Dios que avanzaba al frente del campamento de Israel retrocedió hasta colocarse detrás de ellos y la columna de nube se desplazó también de adelante hacia atrás, interrump interrumpiéndose entre el campamento de Egip egipcio y el de Israel, la nube era tenebrosa para unos, mientras que para otros iluminaba la noche, de manera que en toda la noche no pudieron acercarse los unos a los otros. 
Entonces Moisés extendió su mano sobre el mar y el Señor hizo retroceder el mar, el mar con un, un fuerte viento de, del este que sopló toda la noche y transformó el mar en tierra seca. Las aguas se abrieron y los israelitas entraron a pie en el cauce del mar mientras las aguas formaban una muralla a derecha e izquierda. Los egipcios los persiguieron y toda la caballería del faraón, sus carros y sus guerreros, entraron detrás de ellos en medio del mar. Cuando, estaban por, cuando estaba por despuntar el alba, el Señor observó las tropas egipcias desde la columna de fuego y de nube y sembró la confusión entre ellos. Además, frenó las ruedas de sus carros de guerra, haciendo que avanzaran con dificultad. Los egipcios exclamaron, huyamos de Israel, porque el Señor combate en favor de ellos contra Egipto. El Señor dijo a Moisés, extiende tu mano sobre el mar para que las aguas se vuelvan contra los egipcios, sus carros y sus guerreros. Moisés extendió su mano sobre el mar y al amanecer el mar volvió a su cauce. Los egipcios ya habían emprendido la huida, pero se encontraron con las aguas y el Señor los, un, los hundió en el mar, las aguas volvieron totalmente a los carros y a los, guerre, y a los guerreros de todo el ejército del faraón que había entrado en medio del mar para perseguir a los israelitas. Ni uno solo se salvó. Los israelitas, en cambio, fueron caminando por el cauce seco del mar mientras las aguas formaban una muralla a derecha e izquierda. Aquel día el Señor salvó a Israel de las manos de los egipcios. Israel vio los cadáveres de los egipcios que ya que yacían a la orilla del mar. Y fue testigo de las hazañas que el Señor realizó contra Egipto. El pueblo, el pueblo temió al Señor y creyó en Moisés, su siervo. Entonces Moisés y los israelitas entonaron este canto en honor del Señor. Palabra de Dios. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. He is my God, I praise him, the God of my father, I extol him. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior, 
Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord. The sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us pray. Oremos. Señor Dios, cuyos antiguos prodigios los perquimos resplandeciendo también en nuestros tiempos, puesto que aquello mismo que realizó la diestra de tu poder para librar a un solo pueblo de la esclavitud de Faraón, lo sigues realizando también ahora por medio del agua del bautismo para salvar a todas las naciones, Concede con todos los hombres del mundo lleguen a contarse entre los hijos de Abraham y participen de la dignidad de tu pueblo elegido. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. For why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that you knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy. To our God who is generous and forgiving, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord, as high as the heavens are above the earth. So high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as the heavens, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 
Thanks be to God. Ustedes sacarán agua con alegría de las vertientes de salvación. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Ustedes sacarán agua con alegría de las vertientes de salvación. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. My Savior, I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Ustedes sacarán agua con alegría de las vertientes de salvación. From the springs of salvation. Then le gracias al Señor, vitor en su nombre, publican entre los pueblos sus hazañas. Repitan que su nombre es sublime. Ustedes sacarán agua con alegría de las vertientes de salvación. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord. Tell the wonders God has done. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One, the Holy One of Israel. Ustedes sacarán agua con alegría de las vertientes de salvación. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Let us pray. 
Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Lectura del profeta Ezequiel La palabra del Señor me llegó en estos términos Hijo de hombre, cuando el pueblo de Israel habita en su propio suelo Lo contaminó con su conducta y sus acciones Entonces derramé mi furor sobre ellos Por la sangre que habían derramado sobre el país Y por los ídolos con los que habían contaminado los dispersé entre las naciones y ellos se desminaron por los países. Los juzgué según su conducta y sus acciones. Al llegar a las naciones a donde habían ido, profanaron mi santo nombre, haciendo que se dijera de ellos, «Son el pueblo del Señor, pero han tenido que salir de su país». Entonces, yo tuve compasión de mi santo nombre, que el pueblo de Israel profanaba entre las naciones a donde había ido. Por eso, di al pueblo de Israel, Así habla el Señor, yo no obro por consideración a ustedes, casa de Israel, sino por el honor de mi santo nombre, que ustedes han profanado entre las naciones a donde han ido. Yo santificaré mi gran nombre, profanando entre las naciones, profanando por ustedes. Y las naciones sabrán que yo soy el Señor, oráculo del Señor, cuando manifieste mi santidad a la vista de ellas por medio de ustedes. Yo los contaré entre las naciones, los reuniré entre todos los países y los llevaré a su propio suelo. Los rociaré con agua pura, y ustedes quedarán purificados. Los purificaré de todas sus impurezas y de todos sus ídolos. Les daré un corazón nuevo, y pondré en ustedes un espíritu nuevo. Les arrancaré de su cuerpo el corazón de piedra, y les daré un corazón de carne. Infundiré mi espíritu en ustedes y haré que sigan mis preceptos y que observen y practiquen mis leyes. Ustedes habitarán en la tierra que yo les he dado a sus padres. Ustedes serán mi pueblo y yo seré su Dios. Palabra de Dios. Like a tear that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. My soul longs for you, my God. Like a tear that longs for running streams, my soul. Will guide 
lead me on. They will bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you. Let us pray. Oremos. Dios de inmutable poder y eterna luz, mira propicio el admirable misterio de la iglesia entera y realiza serenamente en virtud de tu eterno diseño la obra de la humana salvación. Que todo el mundo vea y reconozca que los caídos se levantan, que se renueva lo que había envejecido y que por obra de Jesucristo todas las cosas concurren hacia la unidad que tuvieran en el origen. El que vive reina por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption 
so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you aware that we who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
it is wonderful in our eyes. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ. Pues esta noche en la vigilia de la Pascua, las escrituras describen toda la historia de la salvación. Y voy a hablar sobre toda la historia de la salvación, pero no te, no te preocupes, solamente hay tres temas y por eso es muy corto. Y después para de llamar yo también va a hablar en español iba a predicar muy corto, ¿sí? Muy corto. Bueno. So, the scriptures this evening uh, cover the entire history of salvation. And tonight I'm going to preach on the entire history of salvation. But don't panic. There's only three themes. And also, the gospel that I was going to preach on is the gospel of Mark, and we read the gospel of John. So, it's even more fascinating. But tonight, what I want you to hear are three things about the history of salvation. The first one is welcome. The second one is verse 8. And the third one is go back to Galilee. So first, welcome. You know, if you start at the beginning in the book of Genesis, that should be what you experience is welcome. Because what love does is love always goes out of itself. You see, love can't help itself. If love is really love, it can't keep it to itself. It has to share. And so what love does in the book of Genesis is it goes out of itself to welcome us into existence. And it starts in an orderly fashion every single day creating a little bit of the world and a little bit of the universe. But when God got to you, when God got to create you, he looked at you because he had been creating, he'd been working pretty hard, and every day he stopped and he looked at what he had done, and he goes, you know, that was good. It's a good day. But when he finished on the sixth day, and he looked at you, and he saw what he had done with you, he said, that is very good. When he looks at you, he sees something better 
in the entire universe. And we need to take that in because when God looks at us, he sees something better than the entire universe. And he wants to welcome us into his life. In fact, that's what he does. Throughout the whole history of salvation, God is always welcoming us into his life. Now, the other part of salvation history is verse 8. If you read Mark's gospel of the resurrection, the lectionary only gives us verse 1 through 7 of chapter 16. It's the story of the resurrection. It's a great story. It's awesome. It recounts how the women go to the tomb early in the morning on the first day of the week, and they find an empty tomb, and they're told that he is risen. And it stops. It stops right there at verse 7. The problem is, in Mark's gospel, verse 8, the women who were told that he is risen go and tell his disciples he is risen. Verse 8, they were bewildered and terrified and they ran away and they said nothing to no one. The end. Many scholars think that's the actual original ending of Mark's gospel. They said nothing to no one. Because we, the readers, the listeners, have been following along throughout the entire gospel. We've been watching as Jesus has tried to reveal himself to us, and then we watch as people continually get it wrong. Not only do they get it wrong, but because of fear, they turn in on themselves and they turn away from God. Well, that's really kind of the original sin, isn't it? Adam and Eve turned in on themselves. They became fearful. The first thing they did is they hid themselves from God and they failed to recognize the welcome that God wanted them to have. They failed to recognize that they already were included in God's beloved children. Well, that's the history of salvation. And then the final part is after the resurrection, Jesus is very clear. He tells his disciples before he even dies, before he's even crucified, he says, when I have been crucified and risen, meet me in Galilee. Now, why Galilee? Well, not only is Galilee a beautiful region, it's gorgeous, it's kind of like East Tennessee, it's absolutely beautiful. It's got this great lake, these nice mountains, beautiful place. But it's because that's where the apostles first and fell in love with Jesus. It's where they met him, it's where they decided to commit their lives to him, it's where they said, there is nothing more important in my life than following this person. That's the history of salvation. Now, it's also our history because we are part of the history of salvation. And so this evening, the first thing I want to say to all of our elect is welcome. Welcome. I don't know if you noticed, but the reason why we're here is because of you. The church is packed because of you. We gather together with the church throughout the whole world because we are so thrilled that you want to share in the divine life of Christ and his church. And so welcome. And not only welcome, but also, I'm going to warn you, there's going to be this great honeymoon. You're going to love it. It's going to be awesome. We're going to call you neophytes. You're going to be fabulous. You are going to be so devoted. And then something's going to happen. Somewhere along the way, you are going to get challenged. And when you do, it is going to be easy to turn in on yourself. It is going to be easy to forget your first love. It is going to be easy to listen to the voice of the world that says, be terrified, bewildered, run away. Go back to Galilee. Go back to your first love. Go back to where you met the Lord Jesus. Go back to that experience with him where you said, there's nothing more important in my life than growing deeper in love with the one who loved me into existence. There's nothing more important in my life than following the one who before I was even conceived in my mother's womb knew me and called me. 
And so this evening, we celebrate with the church throughout the whole world the great joy that we have in our salvation. And the resurrection is the culmination of that story of salvation because the history of salvation is our own personal history. It is God constantly reaching out to us. It is God desiring to welcome us and bring us into communion with himself. It is God promising us eternal life. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, esta noche celebramos la solemne Vigilia Pascual, que para muchos es llamada la Noche de la Luz y para otros, para la antigua iglesia, la iglesia primitiva, era llamada la Madre de las Vigilias. Y en esta noche toda la liturgia y la lectura nos enfocan hacia lo que ha pasado con un pueblo, el pueblo elegido de Dios. Tenemos muchos símbolos también en la liturgia, la, la, el fuego, la bendición del fuego afuera, la luz apagada de la iglesia, después la, el canto del pregón, después se enciende la luz, todos tenemos la luz, tocamos las campanas cuando cantamos el gloria porque el Señor ha resucitado y todo se enciende y se vuelve luz y vida. Y en ese sentido, queridos hermanos, nos enfoca la liturgia de hoy para introducirnos a nosotros también como parte de esta celebración. Comúnmente cuando celebramos la Semana Santa pensamos que es solamente recordar, pero no se trata de eso, se trata de que conmemoramos, celebramos un acontecimiento que se actualiza y se renueva cada año que celebramos y cada vez que celebramos la Eucaristía. Celebramos este acontecimiento hermoso de la resurrección de nuestro Señor, y cada vez que actualizamos esto, hacemos parte de este acontecimiento. Lo escuchamos hoy en el Evangelio, las mujeres que están en su corazón con la misma oscuridad que aparece en la primera lectura del libro de Génesis. Todo es oscuridad, caos, desorden. La palabra del Señor llega y transforma y genera vida. Las mujeres vienen hacia el sepulcro, encuentran a un hombre, un ángel y el Evangelio de Mateo nos narra todo de manera estrepitosa, extraordinaria. Y el ángel le dice a ellas, buscan al Señor, buscan al que han crucificado, no está aquí, ha resucitado. Las mujeres al escuchar esta voz, dice el texto que se encuentran con Jesús más adelante porque salen corriendo a anunciar que se han encontrado al Señor. Y entonces... Dios transforma en ellas lo que en algún momento era oscuridad y caos. Y ahora ellas se convierten en las predicadoras, las mensajeras de la resurrección del Señor. Necesitamos, queridos hermanos, en nuestro mundo de hoy, mensajeros de la resurrección del Señor. Necesitamos muchas personas que puedan decirle a otros, no está aquí, ha resucitado. No nos quedemos viendo siempre el pasado y la oscuridad y el caos. Veamos que la resurrección de nuestro Señor transforma la vida. Pero especialmente por eso estamos aquí esta noche celebrando. Porque creemos, porque tenemos fe, porque sabemos que Él por todo lo que ha hecho y por su resurrección ha traído, ha traído vida nueva a nosotros, como las lecturas que escuchamos en el día de hoy. La creación, la liberación de un pueblo de la esclavitud, el pacto con un pueblo nuevo y finalmente el espíritu nuevo que infunde a este pueblo, la resurrección. Que este día el Señor nos ayude siempre a permanecer viva la memoria de su amor por nosotros, de su resurrección, pero que nos ayude a involucrarnos en este acontecimiento cada vez que venimos a la iglesia y celebramos la Sagrada Eucaristía y especialmente en este día en que vamos a renovar nuestras promesas bautismales. Que nuestra Madre María nos ayude. Así sea.
Father David, it is my pleasure to present to you the following catechumens uh, to present them to you for baptism. When I call uh, the following catechumens' name, if you'd come, uh, please come forward with your godparent. Lindsay Bolden. David Brio. Stand, no, I'm sorry, stand with your godparent. Sarah Fernandez. Penelope Gamble. Peter Gorish. Tim Henson. Melissa Hunter. Garner Carnes. Carly Knight. Angelina Luna. Jessica Luna. Brenda Minor, Jerry Minor, Elodia Rebolledo, Cody Svoboda, Evan Taylor, Lawrence Thacker, At Glamini Anyer Vargas, Cesar Vargas, Riley Vargas, Alicia Varner, Reagan Wertheimer, Aiden Wertheimer, Abigail Wertheimer. My dearly beloved, with one heart and soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these, our brothers and sisters, in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help.
Almighty, ever-living God, be present at the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the old life may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear catechumens, you are about to be buried with Christ in baptism. Your sins will be forgiven and you will be made members of Christ's body, the church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. Carly, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Melissa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alicia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Evan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. David, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jerry, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Timothy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jessica, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angelina, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lindsay, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Garner, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Penelope, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cesar, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Elodia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Edkelmeni, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Riley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cody, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lawrence, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Aiden, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reagan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Abigail, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
My brothers and sisters, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. See in your white garments the outward sign of your Christian dignity and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. Receive the light of Christ. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen.
My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you all, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. You may now extinguish your candles and be seated. Father David, it is my pleasure to recommend the following candidates for confirmation. When your name is called, please stand with your sponsor. Evan Anderson. Whitney Applewhite. Daniel Clark. Nathan Croft. Josiah Kubel. Jeannie Gass. James Gentry. Debbie Henson. Angie Jedalika. Ryan Jernigan. Michael Jones. Natalie Miramontes Tankersley. Brandon Poor. Brianne Richards. Ethan Rose. Kirsten Rose. Josiah Shutt, Cody Steiner, Emily Steiner, Brenda Svoboda, Raven Taylor, Zachary Thacker, Stacy Waldron, Ricky Wood. My brothers and sisters, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you with your sponsors and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's unity. And so I ask you, do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? I do. Brothers and sisters, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith you have professed in the presence of his family. And now, all of my dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My brothers and sisters, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation, to strengthen them with his gifts 
and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. I invite you now to pray with me. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. Through Christ our Lord, amen. St. Catherine of Siena, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Teresa of Avila, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Therese of Lisieux, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Titus, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Ambrose, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Anne, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. John Paul II, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Monica, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Matthew, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Mary Magdalene, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Mary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Clair of Assisi, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. La Virgen de Guadalupe, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. La Virgen de Guadalupe, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. San Judas Tadeo, 
be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. St. Thomas Aquinas, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. San Giovanni Gualberto, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Thomas, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Lucy, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congratulations. St. Catherine of Siena, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Maria, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Augustine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Francis of Assisi, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Clair of Assisi, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Maximilian Colby, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. John the Baptist, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Julian of Norwich, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Andrew, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. John, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Dymphna, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Rita, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Elizabeth of Hungary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Maximilian Colby, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
St. John of the Cross, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Isidore of Seville, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Catherine of Alexandria, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Anne, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Thomas More, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Francis of Assisi, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. De pie, please stand.
In the fullness of Easter joy, let us bring our needs and hopes to the God of life. In la plenitud del gozo pascual, presentemos nuestras necesidades y esperanzas al Dios de la vida. Y vamos a responder, Lord, hear our prayer, or te pedimos, Señor. Por nuestro Santo Padre y por todos los creyentes, para que su fe en la resurrección los haga gozosos mensajeros de la salvación, roguemos al Señor. Te pedimos, Señor. For the newly baptized and for all who have received the Easter sacraments, that God will bless them with his own wisdom and peace on this day and every day of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por todos los que no han escuchado o no han creído que Jesús es nuestro Redentor prometido, para que sus corazones se conmuevan en el ejemplo de los que proclaman al Señor resucitado, roguemos al Señor. Te pedimos, Señor. For the sick, the suffering, the lonely, and the forgotten, that they may feel the joy of this holy night through our prayers and our loving support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por todos nosotros, para que el gozo de esta noche se desborde en obras de caridad hacia todos aquellos con quien nos encontramos en nuestra vida diaria. Roguemos al Señor. Te pedimos, Señor. For the persecuted church and for all military personnel and first responders in harm's way, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intentions, which we now offer in the silence of our hearts. Por nuestras intenciones personales, las cuales ofrecemos en silencio. Dios glorioso, tu amor perdura para siempre. Haz que el gozo de la resurrección de tu Hijo nos lleve a proclamar la buena nueva de la Pascua a un mundo que la espera ansiadamente. Te lo pedimos por aquel quien es la resurrección y la vida. Glorious God, your love endures forever. Raise us in joy with your Son so that we may proclaim the good news of Easter to a waiting world. We ask this through the one who is the resurrection and the life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pueden sentarse. You may be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints of whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrimage charge on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom we have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, grant to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the For kingdom, the, kingdom the, the power, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you.
For communion this evening, we ask that you allow our newly baptized, received, and confirmed into the church to come forward for communion first, then we'll continue with communion for the entire congregation. Esta noche pedimos por uh, permitir a uh, los nuevos católicos a venir al frente por recibir comunión primeramente y después vamos a continuar con comunión por toda la comunidad. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. I'd like to invite you to join me uh, now that our newly baptized, received into the church and confirmed have made their first communion. Uh, now they are fully initiated into the sacramental life of the church and are properly called neophytes. So congratulations. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The masses and they go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And now we pray to receive a new bishop. Praise to you, Lord our God, our eternal shepherd and guide. We know that all authority comes from you. With confidence in your providence, we entreat you to provide the Diocese of Knoxville a new shepherd after your own heart. In your love for us, send us a shepherd who will lead us in being Christ's heart of mercy voice of hope and hands of justice. Help him to fill our minds and hearts with the truth of the gospel, the power of the sacraments, and the desire to build up your holy church. We pray through Christ our Lord, amen.